Beers and Steinberg. You know what the fuck it is? Aries and Andy, you and a jerk. You know it's time to get this work. The real raw, gutter, uncut cocaine. No political corrections. Always sleep. Fuck being a woke. We discuss politics and jokes. Cry, we lick. There's levels to this shit. Before you were sucking on your mama's tit. Airy Spears don't give a fuck. We talk about race a lot. Racism. Sexism. Much love to my loyal bitch bag holders. Rollers, clip loaders. We got them in the folders. The whole world on our shoulders. Spears and Steinberg. Yeah. This O Steve comes to us from Elijah Brodus. Loud burp sound. Urgh. Jeffrey Dahmer voice. I'm so full, man. I wish I did a good, that guy's Jeffrey Dahmer. Uh, Morgan Freeman voice. So this is between Jeffrey Dahmer and Morgan Freeman. I'm so full, man. Hi, I'm Jeffrey Dahmer's stomach. Somebody please kill me. Loud fart noise. <laughs> Sorry, Morgan. I was so hungry. Ah, Jeffrey. Did you eat nigger junk again? No, not this time. It was some white guy with a small dick. Oh, who? Andy Steinberg? No, not him. This guy, that guy looks like he owns a black trench coat and an AK-47. Oh, Steve. <laughs> All right, Steve. Uh, coming out of that in three, two, one. And then he writes, P.S. No offense to Andy. Love him. Keep up the podcast. Eli from Jersey. See, here was my problem with that. The old Steve didn't make sense. Like if it was, if Jeffrey Dahmer's name was Steve Dahmer, that would have been perfect. But I'm just going, maybe I'm overthinking it, but I just went, where's the connection? Yeah, I mean, it kind of connected, but the thing was he used the, uh, like he used the easy jokes to try to make it funny. Do you know what I mean? Right. Oh, but the little, the little, it's, you know, it, you know what it is? It wasn't clever. That like, oh, Steve, you need to there be you clever. Go. Right, right. There's a cleverness to doing a good old Steve. So that's, and that's what I'm saying. If Dahmer's name was Steve Dahmer, yeah. that would have gave it, you know, the connection. Yeah. Something you, you, you just have to, it, it, it's not necessarily just the funny. It's about the cleverness of, of, of putting an old Steve together. That, yeah. That's, uh, contact uh, Elijah F uh, Frank Williams. Uh, have him give you a little seminar. On on hit and miss school because he hits more than he misses, yeah, but he hits. But 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 the thing is, it's nice. To, you know, he he put it out there. I, yeah. I, I'm going to give him a foul tip on it. I'm not going to give him just a swing and a miss. It's a foul tip. It's still just a, strike. a bit outside. It's still a strike. But he is too. Okay. Yeah, he is to. Yeah, you know, he's still uh, he's still at the batter's box. Keep going. Okay. Okay. I'm, that's fair. Um, this comes to us from Ed Sellers, dear A and A. I've been watching your podcast via YouTube for the past couple of months, and I didn't take your advice and start from the beginning, so I was lost as to your format at first. Tried to tell you. Um, I find your podcast very funny and highly entertaining with the topics, the impressions, and the emails. The main reason for the email today is, Aries, you said on your Hold Your Fire podcast that Gerard Carmichael is in Dave Chappelle's rear view as the GOAT. I just watched the Try Not to Laugh clips. Uh, wait, it says Try Not to Laugh clips. I'm almost confused by that because you put Try Not to Laugh in parentheses. I'm wondering if that's an actual thing that they called it or you're trying to say Try Not to Laugh as in you being sarcastic. Anyway, Try Not to Laugh clips of him also on YouTube. And albeit funny, he is nowhere close to Chappelle. I know you and Andy are in the comedian profession and probably haven't seen him many times. When I watched The Closer and Dave's other Netflix specials, he had me crying from laughter throughout the whole show. Uh, I barely laughed at his jokes, Gerard's, except for the one about OJ. If he owned a Twitter account back before the trial, I'm not saying he's garbage, but I'd rather watch Joe Coy over Gerard. Yeah, I said it. Or Chris Rock. Anyways, I wish you guys continued success on your podcast and your comedy careers. All good in the hood. Northridge. Um, and then because I can't remember, let me quickly, uh, read my response to him. Uh, I said, oh shit, didn't know you were in Northridge 
as am I. When I read this email, I was going to repeat on the podcast what I'm basically telling you in writing, which is as a comedian, context is very, very, very crucial to being able to appreciate the art form of stand-up, which if I'm being honest, I'm not a fan of you watching the podcast on YouTube, which may go against our best interests because it builds our subscribers, hence makes us money, as opposed to you listening to it audio-wise, however you do that, be it Apple, Spotify, etc. cetera. I've, uh, I've just always been a big believer that if you build enough of a great quality product, the money will eventually come. When you watch the podcast on YouTube, you're not getting a perfectly polished, finished product. You hear me giving direction to Steve in terms of music, and sound effects that will eventually be put in. I'm not a fan of people hearing that. And again, uh, and again, when you listen to it out of sequence, you will be lost on jokes and callbacks. So in regards to Gerard Carmichael, if you just watch snippets of his stand-up as opposed to his actual specials from beginning to end, there's no guarantee, obviously, that you will feel he's as great as Chappelle, but I believe you get a better sense of who he is as a comedian which is why you might understand the comparison. <clears throat> Again, Dave to me will always be tops, but in my jazz comparison, Dave is Miles Davis, who most people regard as the greatest jazz musician of all time, whereas Gerard to me is like a Thelonious Monk or a Charlie Parker. Not the top tier spot, but respectably close. And I I, I read that because I, I knew I wasn't going to remember that I wrote him that because I wrote him that a while back. But yes, and I know much to Andy's chagrin, He doesn't like me saying that, but I'm not a fan of the YouTube on podcast because I don't like people not getting the final finished polished product. And that's just me because creatively, I want to be a full fucking force. I don't want to give you a hard on with some softy spots. I want the whole dick to be chaotically hard. Uh, I I don't mind the podcast on YouTube only because it's fun to see the behind the scenes. I think it's fun. I don't think that it you get the full podcast. I, I, I don't disagree with you on that. I think it's a different experience. I, I think it's two different experiences. Uh, I, I do mean you di- disagree on how to listen if you're a new subscriber only because I want you to stay current with what we're talking about today and then go back and listen to them. I want you to catch up and get everything, but I think today's podcast is more important than uh, than episode 200 right now, because especially if you get into it when we're, when we were going through Trump and all that, that just wasn't, I'd rather you be caught up today, but that's me. But it, as far as, um, um, Carmichael, well, uh, before you jump on Carmichael, let me just jump on to what you just said. Well, I think by 2024, we'll be back on the Trump train. No, nah. <laughs> now let's talk about that. Let's talk about that because I don't even think he gets the nomination at all. I don't. Even I think, think I think he's going to be back. I think Empire Strikes Back, baby. No. He's coming. No, because he he is the reason that the Republicans did not get the House. Uh, he's the reason, and they know it. There's a lot of people. There's there's these fringe that make a lot of noise, and they get a lot of media because they get blown up because of they want to they want to embarrass these guys, and so they get a lot of attention. But no, I, I think they shown they're showing that they can't win with him. Number one, and number two, uh, what's his name from Florida that he went after him? Uh, uh, damn, I'm not gonna remember Santos. No, Sant- Santorum or something like that. Uh, mm. well, no, that's not it. Um, anyway, I'll remember after after this is over. I'll remember. But he 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 came out stronger. He. Trump made fun of him and he's probably one of the strongest in their in the Republican Party. Trump is I'll tell you what Trump is going to do. And the Democrats want to force him to run. They want him to run because he'll run as an independent and he'll fuck up the Republican Party. Listen, I'm telling we you. We thought we all thought this before. Nope. I I, I said he wasn't going to win. He came close, but he didn't win. And I guarantee you, he's not going to get the nomination. Too many people have too much, too much of the people that even have behind the scenes things to get people nominated aren't going. They're not going to let him do it. I I, guarantee, I I can't guarantee it, but I'm convinced that he's not running, um, or that he he might run, but he ain't getting that nomination. Um, and if he does get the nomination, he's losing for sure. And but they better. <laughs> but they, you know the fact that you've moved the goal line a couple spots right now tells me he's gonna win. No, 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 no. I, I don't think he is. I, but they can't have Joe Biden run. No matter what, Joe Biden can't run again, man. 
I, I, I don't, dude, I, I don't even think that's him, man. I think there's some strings. I think there's people moving. I think it's a man. <laughs> oh, he's like weekend the Bernie's. And Bernie's, man. Uh, and I'm not even going to shit on, on it. I just think that, dude, I, I'm just telling you that I'm from ge- the generation that's not rep. I'm Gen X, uh, is my generation, and we hardly have had any time to help be a part of this country in the direction it goes in because these these people are 70 what how old is is uh is biden uh, late 70s maybe yeah, is 70s? it a time that someone that may come from a different generation is 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 president i mean is it a time that <laughs> someone that has grown up in in what and understands what's happening now is is president they, they're hanging on these people are not going in. they need to go it's i'm not tradition sa- baby I, it's tradition I, I, I understand that there is knowledge in people that are older but to, to uh to only use that at this particular stage i don't understand but anyway going back to what what what, what were we Gerard just Carmichael. To, I just think that he's doing things with comedy like Dave is. I don't think that he's on that Dave level, but he's working comedy like Dave does. He's he's being personal and he's using storytelling and the way that he moves through his 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 set is is Dave esque, is I think how I put it. So I I like I but there's comedians out there that you know if if we're gonna do a, a one two three four he's not he's not in four. He's not one to four. Yeah, listen, again, this is this is the part where you hear that word subjective. I personally agree uh, with Andy's angle. There's a certain rhythm and a style and an attack position that he's taken that to me is different and special. Uh, I would love to see what comes next. It's next special after that one, uh, especially given what it was, uh, his coming out party. Where does he go from here? But like I said, this, that's why I use the comparison to jazz. Miles Davis is the dude. Yeah. Miles Davis was the Michael Jordan of jazz. But guys like Charlie Parker and Thelonious Monk, uh, beasts, man. Beasts in their own kind of jasmic way. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I think that Carmichael falls under that umbrella. And I'm not saying he, and I'm not, but the thing about Carmichael too is he's still young. He could get to a higher position. The, Dave's been doing it. How many, 35 years Dave's been? Yeah, he said 35. So, you know, th- 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 there's, a, th- again, you you put time, effort, struggle into this. You, you come up with more. Uh, so there's nothing saying that's not going to happen. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not putting a ceiling on where Carmichael is. That's I'm just saying as if today, I think he's doing a lot with comedy. He's in that direction like Dave where he's doing more with comedy than a lot of comics, but not, not into that. that. But he, but I can see him climbing. I see him going. So I, I really appreciate his comedy is what I'm saying. Um, Corey Vaughn, first time, long time. Uh, that was very Asian. Are you going to fuck me? First time, long time. It's, it's what they oh. used to say on... Uh, King. What was that Larry King show? First time, long time. Really? Yeah, they would call up like, first time, long time listener, first time caller. I didn't know that. Yeah. In my Johnny Carson. I did not know that. Um, first time, long time. Aries and Andy, I was listening to some of your old episodes of the podcast, and I've noticed a common theme when you talk about great actors and actresses, and how you both tend to shit on Keanu Reeves. He might not be Denzel or Tom Hanks, but his body of work is very vast. From comedy to drama and even action, I understand that there is a different strokes for different folks, but he does get a pass based on the fact that he's legitimately a really good dude. Well, being a legitimately good dude ain't got nothing to do with your ability. That just means you're a good dude. This is my third time writing the podcast, and I just wanted to hear your thoughts on this. Much love to Andy, the white guy. Um, <laughs> listen, man. Uh, yes, he is a good dude. Genuinely nice. He has the same <laughs> reputation as Will Smith which is Will is one of the nicest guys in Hollywood. Uh, again, how that affects, how that, what that has to do with his ability is completely uh, nil. Um, and yeah, he, he does have a large body of work. But to me, in my assessment, it all feels, yeah, very Keanu-ish. Uh, and I'll give you the perfect example. The movie um, Much Ado About Nothing with Kenneth Branagh, Denzel, uh, Keanu Reeves and I forget some of the other big oh uh, uh, I want to say Keith Sutherland 
is in that. Um, but that's Shakespeare. And, you know, Shakespeare is not supposed to have a duh on any of it. You know, uh, let it be thy horn that I come to thy follow thy travels. For blessed be the curse. Like there's a, there's a tongue to Shakespeare. Blessed be thy sir, sir, sabba, sabba, sabba. That's not Shakespeare is supposed to have a uh, for the blood, uh, uh, on it. So, you know, <laughs> just because you just because you do the job don't mean you qualified. It's a lot of lot of lot of dudes in cop uniforms that don't make good cops. So just putting on a uniform don't mean you're good at the job. See, I have a little bit different take because I do like him and he does have a large body of work. But What's your take, Andy? Yeah. But it's a note. You know, uh, there you go. It's a note that he has. And like it was musicians. If you don't grow on your notes, a lot of times you may have a great album. You may have two great albums, but if you don't start to expand what you do, then, you know, everybody starts to say, oh, well, it's, it's, it's a note. It's one note. And you, you don't put those in that same category. I, I think that there's a difference, different styles of acting as well. I think that some actors like, uh, uh, now, uh, why can't I remember? Give me clues. Give me clues. Give me clues. Name. Give me clues. Taxi driver there. That's uh, the, the Danny DeVito. Oh, no, Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro. That, thank you. Robert De Niro. I, I just read something about him, about how he always came, no matter what, when they look at the film on him, no matter if it's the first take, six, He's he has the character and he's making the decisions that his character makes. He gets into the head of his character. He becomes that character and he puts that character out there. There's other actors that take themselves and work that character into them so that they can be appear natural. That's great too, because most actors don't have a personality. I shouldn't say it this way. There's a lot of actors whose personalities are neutral so that when they take on the embodiment of a character, you the, the, the director or the writer can pull something different out. But Keanu's very specific as a person, and he puts his character into those, and they all have that Keanu character. Even, yeah. in, e, e, even in, and I love him in this stuff that he's doing right now. What's the... What's John the, Wick. John Wick is fucking awesome. And, yeah, but he doesn't really talk. But he does a great job at it. It fits his character, who he, how he is, and it makes him a little bit more of a badass. So it's fun to watch him in that character. But it's still essentially Keanu. I mean, yeah. when you, I, when you say, I, people keep asking me if I'm back. People keep asking me if I'm back. So you know what? I'm guessing I'm back. Very Keanu, right? Yes. So that that's the thing. It's not about good or bad. You know, he does his job well. But it's his character that if you don't appreciate that note, that's who, but a, a nice guy. Listen, some, some songs you could listen to a million fucking times. You love the song that much. It moves you that much. With Keanu's notes, some of his notes, you could just, people love his notes. And ain't nothing wrong with that. No. And I, and I, and I, and I appreciate him. And when you go, when you said nice guy, fuck yeah. One of the, uh, from what I understand and from just the little interviews that he has and the things that he said, probably great human. Yeah. But I know other great humans that I can hang out with, but I'm not going to watch him in a movie. Right. But I will go to a Keanu movie. Not, maybe not all of them, but. They I, should do a thing where in every movie, when he, after he goes, yeah, you just cut to him in a buggy. And he hits the horses <laughs> and it takes off. <laughs> yeah. You should just have someone make a video clip where you just pull out all those yes and then you do that. And it'd be, you know, and you, yeah, you, you should put that him. out there. I think that would be funny as fuck. <laughs> Somebody put together a compilation and I didn't know this until I saw it. You know, Denzel says guarantee. I guarantee. And almost every film, I guarantee it. I guarantee. He says guarantee, like Sam Jackson says, motherfucker. No, no one. The, he has to have the record. I promise you, Andy, I, I did not notice it until I saw the compilation. I went, holy fucking shit. Almost in every Denzel moment, there's a moment where he goes, I guarantee. Huh? I guarantee it. He guarantees the shit out of you. 
<laughs> who is the commercial where the guy goes, I get, oh, that used to be the, uh, the, the clothing guy, uh, men's warehouse. You'll look good. Oh, right, right. He ended it with, I guarantee it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, wouldn't that be crazy if that's what Denzel got it from? <laughs> All right, I like that. Huh? I like that. Make people feel like no matter what, whatever they do, I guarantee it. <laughs> All right. Kyle Singer, uh, Afro man, short and sweet. Yo, my dudes, Kyle Singer again. How y'all be doing? It's been a while since I wrote in, but y'all already know I'm a loyal listener. I've been hearing y'all mentioning the Vice News Network. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime Aries does the emails, he's going to burp. I guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> that oh my god don't crack me that is oh man that wouldn't hit the motherfucking <laughs> chest dude <laughs> <laughs> all right all right every time aries reads the emails huh he's gonna do a louis he's gonna burp i guarantee it <laughs> right. uh since y'all are weed smokers go check the origins of the famous song afro man because I got high on their, because I got high on the YouTube channel. I'm only tw I'm 23 minutes in. It's fucking hilarious. As always, love y'all. Ride with y'all. Peace, brothers. Kyle, you remember Afro Man? Yeah. You know that was kind of like a novelty song, wasn't it? Yeah, but you could make a whole career off of Tone Loke. Just made a whole career. Tone Loke. He might take offense to that because he actually had three big hits. He did. Funky but Cole Medina, Wild Thing. Those are the only two I remember. But if you were walking down the street, tw what that was 80s, right? 90s, no, 90s, 90s, 90s. Yeah. late 80s, late 80s. No, 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 90s. I think early 90s. I'm looking up. If but, it's eight, it, 89. Okay, okay. Even if it is, what is this? 30 something years later, he made that that's lasted. I'm just saying you can make a career off something that hits that hard. That's that's lasted with white folks. Niggas. You know, like I said, certain black songs are in white people. Lore. Oh, yeah. okay. Let me rephrase it so that I can take the white out of it. If I can get paid 30 years later. Yeah. Oh, well, shit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's always the goal. <laughs> yeah. It's called, yeah. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. It's called publishing. Uh, Deidre and Johnson. Terminal list. Finally finished that movie. It felt like an eternity. Yeah. Let me stop right there. She sent me that same email. This is why women, sometimes we got to keep you out the treehouse. Because <laughs> you say shit like that. <laughs> Let me finish. It's really short. I love man food movies as much as you guys. And I really like Chris Pratt. But damn, I thought that movie would never end. First of all, a good man food movie. And one, it wasn't a movie. It was a series. But a good man food movie, be it a series or a movie, we never want to end. Ever. It could be a buffet of nonstop foolishness. As long as the man ingredients are strong, we never want it to end. Yeah, but there's something in there that's different for her. And I know what it is. What? We emotionally connect that man's trauma. We yes. emotionally connect to it as a man, not as a human, not as a woman, not as a child, not as any, as a man. We connected to him as his feelings of him. He let down his family. He wasn't there to save them. You took what was mine and you took it away from me. I, I know women connect in a way of that same thing, but not as a man. That's what's missing. That's man. That's the man part. I'll even go as far as to say not only that, we also connect through the fantasy. Yeah. Which makes sit man food movies. We would love to be the guy with the gun in the woods shooting at some motherfucking Mahujadeen. We want to be the fucking action star. We want to be the guy that whoops ass in a black suit and goes, y'all. <laughs> Cut to... Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, but you know, we know we, we love you, sweetie, but yeah, that's why you know 
We got to be careful who we let in the treehouse. You just, you know what I mean? You, you fought it in a circle. Sometimes when you come up into the treehouse, we have magazines that a woman might not appreciate. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Why are you wiping your mouth with the fucking score cover or the hustler cover? Because these are our napkins. When we eat hot wings, we wipe our mouths with dirty naked magazine pictures. So we taste chicken wing and pussy at the same time. All right. Poncho Z. Black Panthers rise up. What up, Brother Aries? And I knew it, Andy. I fucking knew it. Shuri is the fucking Black Panther. I knew his sister was going to be the Black Panther. Like, it made sense. Well, we killed that for everybody that doesn't know now. Ah, but come on. You saw it when you saw the preview and you saw it was a woman. Who else was it going to be? Uh, I was listening to past episodes of the podcast and the one that really got to me was the one where you guys were talking about the Nate Parker movie, American Skin. Uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, hold on a second. Uh, what's the baby mama calling me? Sorry, guys. All right, here we go. Um, it's the movie uh, Nate's son is killed by a cop. Remember this, Andy? That movie? I think so. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, yeah. Yeah, I do. Nate's son is killed by a cop. And so he he held up a police station. Uh -huh. He held up a police station hostage and has a mock trial yep. in honor of his son. But when I was watching the movie, I was thinking this was a whole bunch of bullshit. And I already knew he wasn't going to get away with this. And he was killed in the end anyway. And then I remembered you did a video about you being pulled over by the cops and you did a parody of the State Farm commercials and you called on a good neighbor and a Black Panther brother came and you defended yourself against the pigs. And I thought that's what Black America wanted to see uh, since forever. Thanks for being a voice for Black for the Black community. That's also funny as well. And also, I seen the new Black Panther movie, Wakanda Forever. And let me just say, the first movie was like the Chicago Bulls in the 90s. Strong and real. This new movie is like the Chicago Bulls without Michael Jordan, just not the same. I like that comparison, meaning without Chadwick Boseman. But from most of what I've read online, everybody's saying this one is 10 times better than the first one. And I got to admit to what Neri said, <clears throat> given the gravity of Black Panther, the first or the, 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 the biggest commercialized mainstream black superhero because I got to give credit to Wesley Snipes. Blade was the guy who was the first Marvel superhero before but, yeah, but Black most, Panther. But most people don't even know that that was a Marvel comic. Exactly. Um, but that being said, uh, so given the gravity of what Black Panther was, we knew it was an event. We knew we had to support it. It was big. It was almost as big as Obama becoming president. This was a big first. But once the hype died down, I, I said to Neri, you know, Black Panther, it was cool. It didn't blow me away. Like I said at first, because I felt obligated to go, man, that shit was fire because it was the first big deal. But it really didn't blow me away. That being said, I'm reading where a lot of people online are saying this second one is fucking fantastic. Uh, I have not seen it. I don't think Andy has seen it. Uh, maybe when we are in Tampa, I'll treat Andy to the movie, even though he should be treating me because it is Black Panther. Uh, yeah, but Kyrie so. said that shit. No, I'm not. Just, I'm just oh, it's hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. So I, I, you can't treat me now. Hilarious. Uh, <laughs> you are anti-sister popcorn, nigga. Um, so, yeah. And, and I know people also want us to talk about Black Adam. So, uh, which we did see, which we did see. Uh, and we were supposed to on yesterday's podcast, when we were talking about the Hebrew, the Negro, we were going to mix that in with the and one DVD, but we, we just didn't get to it because you know what we covered. Um, so maybe we could push the and one thing and the, and the money thing yeah. back. Uh, and we could talk about both black Adam and yeah. black pa Panther and call it the blacks. Yeah, because um, we need to do two episodes when we're out there anyway. 
Do we? Yes, we do. Because be- Indianapolis. Yep. Because yeah, Thanksgiving. So yeah. So, so yeah, we'll 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 get up to speed. Um, we'll get everybody done. We're gonna make everybody yes. happy. We're gonna get it all done. It's gonna be like yes. Thanksgiving. You're gonna have everything. exactly. You gonna have stuff turkey. the turkey, baby. Yeah. Um. And the only other thing I'll say is, you know, Andy, you don't know this, but once upon a time ago, when I was trying to create my own sketch comedy show that I was trying to shop to some networks, I met with Howie Mandel and his company. And now if I had it to do over again, this is an example of, as a black person, rethinking things. So I bring him the demo to the sketches that I personally shot and paid for out of my own pocket for him to watch to potentially give me a deal for my own sketch show. And the very sketch I opened with that he saw was the one this guy mentioned in the email that I one, once upon a time ago I had on YouTube where, yeah, yeah, I'm getting pulled over by a racist cop. The cop's about to whoop my ass, the two white cops. And I go, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And a Black Panther dude shows up and we both pull out two nine millimeters. One, I got two in my hand, two in his, and we blow these cops away Full Martin Scorsese, slow motion, blood pellets, violent Quentin Tarantino type shit. Uh, and the look on Howie's face was speechless. <laughs> <laughs> that probably is not the one I would have led with. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, needless to say, <laughs> I didn't get the deal. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like Andy said, we'll be all caught up. It, it, it would be funny if you did that sketch now because now uh, uh, the dude from State Farm is a black dude now. What's I forgot the guy's name. Oh, right, right. I, I see who. I know who you're talking about. I don't know his name. I, for, I forgot even the name that they call him on. It. There's, there's, he looks like a very, I could bring him home to my father fuckable to a white girl black guy. But he could have showed up. But now, now you could redo that video. You know, Yeah, like, but it would have. And listen, I did this at a time. When it was really yeah. like cops yeah. was killing yeah. niggas rampant. Yeah. So I thought I was being topical and edgy and funny. But, dude, I'm telling you, when I say the kill is so graphic, it's really Quentin Tarantino, Django proportions. See, I think. I mean, like full blown ketchup bottles exploding. I think you should keep that video. And here's how I would do it, though. I would, uh, I would cut it, though, so that you would say the State Farm dude. And then that dude shows up, right? And he, the new one, the new guy, and he tries to work it out with the police, but they ain't having it. <laughs> and he goes, last resort. Sorry, man. And then he calls the Black Panther in and then you blow him up. But he tried. Uh, OK, he tried. I to thought you was going to say he tried. I thought you was going to say he, we, he tried to work it out and the cops killed both of us. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, you know what? <laughs> that, that's it. You just you made it better. So here's what happened. Now he tries to intervene, right? And uh, and then you see, then you you have him go, you know, it's not going to work, or whatever. So he calls in the Black Panther, you guys killed, killed the, the two cops, right? And then it's like a dream. Like, then you realize it's a dream, and then the cops just end up killing you guys. That would have worked. You. That would have worked right. because, that would have worked because the mentality of that would have sold both things that you needed to happen, what you would, what you wish could happen, and the reality. Right, and then and then you could have got it by by uh, him, but that's years later. It's too long. <laughs> let, let, let's let's recut that. Let's let's put it out. Let's see what happens. <laughs> right, because we're doing you do you're doing real good with videos uh, on the market like that. So let's yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I know I know. This that, next that's... one comes to us from Dominic Lawrence. <laughs> there we go. Um, bro, just stop. Oh, this guy's a little upset with me. Uh, listen, y'all, I dig the podcast and all of that. And as long and as a long time listener, I know your disdain for the South and specifically Memphis. With that being said, please stop putting Memphis chuckles on your tour schedule just to cancel. You did the same damn thing in November of 2021. I'm in Southern Kentucky and bought tickets reserved an Airbnb. Oh, shit. And set up. Uh, <laughs> God damn, dog. And and set up uh, a whole weekend around the 7.30 Saturday show. I'll get a ticket refund, but I'll lose money on the Airbnb. 
It's just irritating to make all these plans just to get a cancellation notice the day before the show. And I listened closely to the end of the shows to make sure you guys were coming and nothing was mentioned of canceling. Come on, y'all do better. Well, like I told you, brother, I didn't cancel the show. Uh, The owner did. And I didn't find out till the wee hours, like three o'clock in the morning, my time till the day I was the day before I was supposed to get on a flight. So there's, and I had to text Andy and tell him it wasn't happening. So there's no way we could have let you know because I didn't know to the last minute. So it wasn't me, bro. Uh, I think you, I think you do have to stop talking shit about the South because they took that shit personal up there. Uh, well, not too personal. He was coming. Yeah. But, yeah. But I, I think, I think people get upset about, you. I do think people get, take it personal. But listen, I, 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 I love you. I love you. <laughs> um, That's just, but I just give them, I, I like it. Yeah. I forget what podcast we recently did, but I gave credit where the credit is due. I said, look, it's all tongue in cheek. I know that Southerners are smart and intelligent. That's just, you know, the joke is in the stereotype. Yes. It's always in the stereotype. It's not in the reality. A little bit of it is because jokes are truth. But you know what I mean. But yeah, it. but it is in the stereotype. And that that so anyway, uh yeah, that wasn't on Aries. Yeah. Um, Devon Johnson, Hollow Man talks about the invisible man. Hey, Aries and Andy, I was watching this movie Hollow Man. In the movie, the Hollow Man makes a joke. I don't get the joke, but I think the answer to the joke is that the invisible man is having sex with Wonder Woman. The joke goes, Oh, yeah, I've 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 heard this joke. Uh Yeah. Do you have you heard this joke, Andy? No, I don't think so. Superman is flying over Metropolis. He's horny as hell. He's checking out the rooftops and all of a sudden he sees Wonder Woman sunning herself on the roof of the Justice League. Uh, She's lying there, butt naked, spread eagle. She's looking she's looking like she wants to be fucked. Right. So Superman says to himself, oh, my God, I got to get myself some of that wonder pussy. But then he realizes he could fly down, do a little fast pumping and be gone before she even knows uh, knows it right because he's Superman. Superman swoops down and fucks so fast. Wonder Woman sits up and says, "What the fuck was that?" All of a sudden, the Invisible Man stands up and says to Wonder Woman, "I don't know what that was, but my ass sure does hurt." <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Yeah, so Superman fucked the Invisible, Invisible man. man. He yes, he had gay sex with a man he couldn't even see. Uh, there you go. Um, <clears throat> Ephraim Young. Oh, okay. What's up, brothers? I know you like Bill. <clears throat> you got to check out his pod. His pod out, bro. He had Quentin Tarantino, Woody Harrelson, Mike Tyson, fucking Daryl Hall from Hall and Oates, Trumper Kid, Trumper Kid Rock, and they fucked and they got fucked up. Uh, picture drink champs, but more intellectual. Both great, but a different vibe. Check it out. Yeah, I know Bill Moore has a podcast. Uh, I've never uh, really had any desire to see it because um, I know he talks politics a lot, but in his stand up. So I don't know if he does that on the podcast, but really outside of real time, uh, I don't really have a strong desire. You to, know, uh, it's still it's still that same, you know, kind of. Right. Yeah, but he has other people. Uh, speaking of the hall and uh, Daryl Hall, he had a thing called Hall's Dar- house or something. He has this cool uh, music uh, video cast that he does where he, people come in and they play me. It, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, that has nothing to do really with what you're saying. I, I don't check out Bill Maher as much as I would, but I would like to because uh, I've been, he's he's he is kind of a voice of reason because he's not on anybody's side. But, he, but then sometimes no. he just goes too far. Yeah. I mean, it seems like he, he he tends to lean, his instinct is to lean more to the left than the right because yeah. he's a liberal, he considers himself liberal. But uh, again, not that it really makes me laugh. I'm just so intrigued at the idea of being able to do political comedy for an hour straight because that's just something I can't do. If you did it every day, you'd be able to do it. Ah, dude, I, I you know, I think you have to have some sort of an interest in it to to be good at it because that's where the passion is and other than him and lewis black i i just you know i'm i'm marveled by the fact that they can do that but i have no passion 
for politics enough to think I can make it funny. That's fair. Uh, Nick Puente. What's up, Aries? I listened to the latest episode. Who is this doctor motherfucker? He's a rapper and obviously not a fucking good one. Oh, he's going to write you an email. <laughs> he's going after two comedians to make his career relevant. Pastor Spears, I'm a part of your congregation. And this asshole is window liquor retarded. He's a doctor. Like I'm pretty, like I'm pretty and I'm not winning any beauty contest. As a matter of fact, I came in last. Back behind the transgender bitch with a Tom Selleck mustache. Mustache. Further, him sending multiple messages to you a month screams stalker. I went back to earlier episodes and listened to his music, and I finally understood why you guys put him on. It's because children with special needs need shine, too. Oh, you are definitely going to receive an email for this motherfucker. He is going to call you all kind of diarrhea, caked up ass lickers. Uh, you gentlemen let him shine, and what a chari charitable endeavor that was. He's just being ungrateful, bitching over nothing. If this gets read on the podcast, great. If I get a response, awesome. If you only read this and nothing more comes of it, then it, I at least was able to get my words read. Uh, thank you for reading. Next time you're in Denver, I would love for you and Andy to come see me, do me. Oh, come see me, see me, do me, Jesus. Uh, and it turn into a Superman, Invisible Man moment. <laughs> I would love for you and Andy to come see me do my set at an open mic night and any advice you guys can give me afterwards would be amazing. Stay cool, Nick Puente. P.S. I didn't add this in my DM on IG, but since the doctor here wants to be a little bitch, maybe you can call Right Hook Ronald since he's in the business of knocking bitches out. Oh! <laughs> also, one question for Andy. As a Jewish Mexican, is your nose so big that you can smell immigration coming? I'm curious. Thank you again. I'm going to tell you, Nick, what Eddie Murphy told me. You're doing material. You're doing... He's trying to be funny, but obviously... He's trying to be funny, but, uh, but yeah. you know, I, I know where the Fruit Loops are, though. Nice. <laughs> Toucan Sam. <laughs> Jubik having nose, motherfucker. All right. Uh, thank you, Nick. Uh, you know, last time I was in Denver, Andy wasn't. No, it wasn't. Uh, you couldn't make it, right? Nah, I forgot why. There was but something. you've been to Denver. Yeah, I've been to Denver several times. That's where Yeah. I, the very first time I went to Denver, I was so excited that they had legal uh, weed that I took a gummy on stage. I remember that. And uh, it was so funny because when I went to take it, the whole audience yelled, no, don't do it. Right, 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 right. Uh, oh shit! That's one of my favorite times. All right, and I and I I I, I want to say you did rather well. Yeah, I did. I, I did well out there. I I, I, yeah. I I like Denver. Denver's cool, man. It, you know me, man. I just damn man. I, fuck. Da, da, da. Don't just, Come here. yeah. Go on. Ah. Okay, uh, Daryl Albright. Thanks. Sorry if I offended you. What's up, Double A Double S? Uh, here's a riddle for you too. Uh, the man that built it doesn't need it. The man that buys it doesn't want it. The man that needs it doesn't know he needs it. What is it? One more thing. Uh, okay, before I go on to his other shit, do you know that? No. You, you know, you know. Well, a man that built it doesn't need it. The man that buys it doesn't want it. The man that needs it doesn't know he needs it. Pussy? I don't know. What is it? Yeah, what is it? Uh, one more thing. Uh, what are you guys' favorite rap beefs of all time? I know you're a real hip-hop head, so this should be interesting. My top five are Kumo D versus LL Cool J, Ice Cube and NWA, LL Cool J versus Cannabis, Dr. Dre versus Easy e Nas and Jay-Z. I can tell you right now, dog, out of that list of five, my two top two are Nas and Jay-Z Ether. And uh, LL Cool J and fucking Cannabis. Andy, I don't know how big you are into the rap beef or if you know those. No, I, I don't. I don't. I don't watch. I don't listen. Oh, goodness. Uh, fucking uh, Nas's baby mother's name was Carmen. And in the song, Jay-Z goes, uh, wait, who, who allegedly fucked? Oh, Allen Iverson allegedly fucked Nas's baby mother. She so goes, me and AI got more in beef than Carmen. Get it? More than Carmen. <laughs> did you follow that, Andy? Yeah, yeah, I did. 
damn, we got more in beef than Carmen. Carmen. Oh, fuck it, man. No, I know the cannabis shit. I never really, li- I never paid attention to that. Oh shit. And I got all, oh, you know what? Fuck that. Uh, number one has to be Biggie and Tupac. Well, that uh, one I knew about, but only because that, there's movies made about that. Yeah, but that, I don't know if you ever heard that hit him up by Tupac yeah, yeah. when he starts off, you know, yeah. that's why I fucked your bitch, you fat motherfucker. Damn. Yeah, that was vicious. That didn't even feel like a beef. That felt like a sexual assault. Um, Peace Kings, keep me laughing. Keep me laughing to myself and looking crazy at work. Oh, then he puts the answer to the riddle. What the answer to the riddle is a coffin. Ah, uh. To Andy, we know death is inevitable, but shit happens. You can walk in a store and just like that, boom, lights out. Daryl Albright. Coffin, okay. Built it, doesn't need it. The yeah. man that buys it doesn't want it. The man that needs it doesn't know he needs it. Right. Yeah, it's perfect. Uh, All right. Yeah, but, uh, would you want to die in your sleep? Because I would think said. that's the most peaceful way to go. Right, but you never even know. And that shouldn't it be that way? Do you want to know that you're going? Like it's no. it's kind of anticlimactic. You what you what, do your whole life on Earth? Don't you want to know that you're leaving? You didn't know you were coming. I know, but don't you want to like be maybe with some loved ones and be like, all right? No, nah, it seems poetic that you know you leave this motherfucker how you came in this motherfucker asleep. Yeah. All right. Waking up to the first image. Of your fat daddy in his white drawers standing over you in a dark night while there's a fire in the background. Dude, do you remember anything as a baby? Like, like do you, any vision? No. Do you? Not, that, that was it. You, my that, father, we, we, we got burned out of our house in Chicago, of our apartment. And my father told us, you know, it was me and my sister. Happened at night. Uh, he got up. He didn't have time to put his clothes on. He had me under one arm, my sister under one arm, and we made it out into the street. And I swear to God, I specifically remember my dad standing over us in nothing but his tidy whities And that's all I remember. Yeah, no, I don't have any memory from my kid, from my, I, you know, right. I, I barely have memory from what happened yesterday. So, you know, right. <laughs> you, you <can't. laughs> uh, Okay, Doug Gibson. <clears throat> Worst rendition. Oh, wait, did I read this? Yeah, I think I may have read this before. Um, let me go back. Uh, this is where I start getting nervous because it feels like I fucking read some of these. Uh, okay, I know I haven't read this one. Uh, Gabatron 88. Uh, the Return of Stan. Uh, last podcast, the first emailer said that... <clears throat> said that was the last email he, he would be sending. Was that Stan from episode 56? If it continues down the same path, be on the lookout for any news about a dude driving his car off a bridge who has his girlfriend in the trunk. Uh, I get you on the whole football thing. Wife hates on me every game because I have a team I'll cheer for, cheer for but I can't name you, th- name you Dak's third cousin's dog. Never been sure on why is it important to know every single stat and piece of personal info of every player, coach, and team owner if that is irrelevant to the scoreboard. I'm like, I get that one player has more responsibilities or uses certain skills more than others, but if one messes up, the rest of the team is fucked anyway. On my last email, I added a couple of saw moments. Would you rather be, oh, I think, yeah, this is nice. I like these. Would you rather be the king of Zamunda 88 or the king of Wakanda 2022. Dude, I got to go Wakanda because they got all the cool weapons and machinery. Um, yeah, but you don't, have next, your, you don't have your face on your own money. That's true too. But with the machinery, it gets pussy. <laughs> you don't need a face on your own money. Um, <clears throat> which one would you rather? King of Zamunda or, or king of Wakanda? And it comes with a lot of responsibilities. I'm going to Zamunda. So you want your face on the money? I want my face. I want it just to be, you know, it seemed nicer. Like, you had your little country. Boy, you, you, you Jews, boy. Yeah. The face on the money. God now, damn. I, I need it to be simple. 
Man, it just it seemed nice, didn't it? It seemed nice. It was just, it looked like it's been, the country looks like it's been doing fine since Eddie Murphy left it. I don't know how many decades ago. <laughs> they went right. back and was still looking good. So uh, Wakanda has, seems like a lot of issues. Um, Next one was taken from Mad TV, Masterson Brothers episode. <clears throat> Beat up your mother. Oh, goodness. Check this one out. Beat up your mother or make love to your father. What? Be, yeah. Be, beat up your mother or make love to your father. My mom's going to take a beating. <laughs> yeah, man. That bitch got to go now. <laughs> Plus, I remember some of the heinous ass whoopings I used to get. So she's due. <laughs> <laughs> hey, make love to my pops, nigga. Uh, uh, last one. Go back in time and change one decision for yourself, for your younger self. Younger you keeps living, having made the change, but your current you dies immediately after. Or go forward in time and bring back the way to prevent whatever kills you. Well, that's, well, first of all, what's going to kill you is inevitable. Um, death, death is inevitable. So even if you change, let's say, your diet, you're still going to die from something. So I don't know that that, has as much meaning. Uh, but the first one, let me make sure I understand this. Go back in time and change one decision for your younger self. Younger you keeps living, having made that change. But your current you dies immediately after you make the change. This seems obvious. Go back and make the decision. What's the point if you're going to die immediately after the change? The current you dies, but then it makes a new you. Wait a minute. Say that again. The current you dies. So like you make that change. So it takes your life on a different path. So the current you will be dead because okay. the new you is going to, because that change oh. that you make provides you a different outcome. Okay. But if that's and the then case, the yeah, right. Yeah. If that's the case. Yeah. Yeah. And then, okay. Now his second one, go forward in time and bring back the way to prevent whatever kills you. Yeah, the first one, dude. Yeah, because you yeah, st you still exist. One. You just don't exist as who you are. Yeah, if, I, if I'm understanding it right. Yeah, yeah. I'll Plus, if I were to go forward in time and bring back the way to prevent, oh yeah, if I were to go back in time, go forward in time and bring back the way to prevent whatever kills me. Yeah, I tell my ex-wife, bitch, you got to go. <laughs> I can't fuck with you. <laughs> uh, no, I think about that all the time. I think about, um, honestly, I, I know where my life took a turn that I would like something different from that moment, but then I don't have my, my kid. I don't have my kids. So I would never, I, I would have to keep that old life. Ah, anyway. Right. Because had I never met my kids, fuck it. I wouldn't care. Because right. you can't miss what you don't know. But I know right. that. So now I have right. to. Now I'm stuck with them. And, and, gotcha. I, and I love those little motherfuckers. So yeah, I, I can't change that either. But I understand if I understand what he's saying, though, I, I take the if, if those are my only two choices and I, ta I take uh, changing that that thing. Damn, dude, to beat up your mother, fuck your father is damn near on the same level as woman with a dick and a man with a pussy. What a conundrum. Now, that's easier. I could because you don't really have to, you beat up your mother. You have to beat up your mother. You can't fuck your dad. I know, but you're beating up your mom, son. Like you said, she she had some things that right. she deserves. Right, <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. And when you said beat her up, I mean it didn't say like to the inch, uh, uh, you know, to the. What if it was an Adam Sandler? Uh, what was my Bob? What was Bob, my man's? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I know who you're talking about Bob, Bob Barker. Barker. Yeah, that style beat up. Uh, you had to beat your mom up like that. Well, Bob Barker ends up beating Adam Sandler up at the end. But you know what I mean. Yeah, you know. As long as she comes out, all right. You and your mother fight like Peter Griffin and the chicken and family guy. <laughs> it's that kind of fight. It goes on for days. Can't fuck my dad. Yeah, that's true. Um, okay. Uh, and that was from Gabatron 88. There's, there's, too, there's too many problems in that idea. Right, right. Uh, and when he asks you who's your daddy, you literally <laughs> have to say you are. I don't think you can come back from that one. Like you can buy your mom, you, you can buy your mom a nice gift and say, I'm sorry. 
You don't right. understand what was at stake here. Hey, nigga, remember who your daddy is. <laughs> right. All right. Um, Angel X Santana. What up, ANA? I hear they're going to make another Friday the 13th movie or show. I'm not sure, but what you, th- what you're, but what you're think. Ooh. Ooh. $10. A lot of money. Dude, there's inflation now. That may be a $12. That might be a $12. Right. But what you think. But what will think, what you think will catch it or you just don't give a fuck. Well, I pretty much feel the way about your question that you felt about the structure <laughs> of your question. I just don't give a fuck. Uh, P.S. Thanks again for reading my email. I can't thank you enough. I always love the podcast, even if my crazy ass is mad at you for whatever reason. And because you made that short and sweet, um, you sent another one that's even short and sweet. So I'm going to just get you out of here on a back to back. What up, Papa Aries and Papa Eddie? I don't want to stalk the doctor. I'd rather stalk Gemma. I wonder if you're going to talk about more movies. I'm a movie buff. Uh, loser plus video games too. P.S. You're the best. You're the best. Oh, you're the best. Oh, you know what that's from? Rocky, isn't it? No, your favorite. You watch the thing on Netflix. The best? Karate Kid. Oh, I, yeah. Your Daniel's son. That's, that was every 80s montage with him. Yeah, you know what? You're the best. Oh, I guess I'm putting that out of my head right now because I, I couldn't watch any more of those karate kids. Oh, and I only named that. I only said that because you like Cobra Kai. I, I, I couldn't watch anymore. Like it you got, stopped. Yeah, it got. Um, oh, you fell off the Cobra Kai train. Yeah, it got where every. It was just like predictable and everything at the end was just they, they they're about ready to make everything better, but they miss it by. That much, you know, everything, every mm. time it, it, it started to get painful. Like where I was like, all right, that's oh, enough already. Damn. Yeah. I never thought I would hear you say you got off the Cobra Kai train. I liked the first two seasons and then I just, I couldn't. How it, about Brett? Was he in the, in, in, in the current ones? I, I don't, I heard he's doing more in there. I, I don't know if he is or not. I just couldn't, I, I couldn't do it. Wow. Damn, yo. Let's pull a little liquor out for the homie. Yeah. Uh, oh, this is from my boy, Ronald Williams. Oh, here he come. Watch out, girls. He'll beat you up. Oh, here he come. He's a woman beater. All right. Uh, just saw Black Panther 2, a.k.a. Woman King 2. His legacy is bigger than Black Panther. He didn't create Black Panther. The character was here years before he was born and years before he played them. But this is why black men are looked at as soft. We know you ain't. So many black men in Hollywood who could have done a good job playing Black Panther, but a soft black males, but you soft black males rather give it to a woman than to see another black man play the role. Let that have been Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans, Iron Man, or Captain American. Uh, they would have recast them without a doubt. But I'm a 38, year, but I'm 38 years old, and a lot of you guys are new to the Black Panther since 2017. Only woke black people are going to like this stupid ass movie. Wow. You, you know, uh, not not just not not throwing it out, but there's been three Spider Mans. Three different okay, Spider-Mans. So, so to his point. Yeah, there's been three different Spider-Mans. Recast every time. You know, interesting. Uh, there was a post. I, but, you know what, but, but I'm sorry, before you go. But is that a, that's a black, black and white thing, though? Because he said, had it been Robert. Right. Is that, is that? Well, here's where the comic book nerds get upset. Uh, there was a black girl that I, I reposted her post. And she had that very complaint. And she even started out with, what I have complained about many a times on, on this podcast. She said, I find it hard to believe and stupid that this small, dainty, 105 pound soaking wet woman is, is thrashing these big dudes around and beating their asses like that. And she felt it was an agenda. She used the word agenda for Hollywood to again, masculate and do away with black men. Um, because she said 
She didn't say the thing about recasting, but she said that this thing was basically what Ronald just said, woman king on steroids. It was a bunch of women kicking ass and the men were obsolete and they were only good for comedic fodder. And she, this girl that whose post I reposted, got hammered in, in the the responses. Because first of all, all the comic book geeky, nerd, geeky nerds were saying, clearly she don't read comic books. If she did, she would have known. And at some point, his sister does become Black Panther. Once she takes the, the powerful herb, she gets the superpowers. So therefore, she could beat men up. Then a lot of Black women were saying, if you do your homework, there are plenty of true stories of actual African female warriors that exist that do kick ass like men. This girl took a beat, man. Well, you know, I, I, I get both points, though, because here's the I, I understand it's the comic book, the woman. This goes against some of the things that you say, because you don't you don't like when the woman is you, you don't always believe the woman, but it, it could be the dominant one in these fights. But as he, they just said, got the herbs gets the strength, has the power. I mean, Robert Downey Jr., because they brought him up, Iron Man doesn't have any strength without the suit, so without that herb power, that's what makes the power. So it's a comic book. You are able to take that leap to to get it. But I get this part, though, too. There's so few uh, main black men characters, especially in this Marvel universe, and then you take the strongest one, the most powerful one, and it go it, it follows the the line of of right now even though it was in the comic book i get that but the <coughs> the agenda again can be seen I, and i don't agree it's an agenda i don't agree with this particular moment it's part of a lot of agenda. people hated that she used that word agenda yeah that one, yeah but i do see that now where's our dude super we had the dude he was one of the best it was one of the best movies it was one of the it, but so then now we don't have to do it again. And, and I, I understand how that kind of plays into some of the, this back and forth. I, I, but I don't think that, I mean, let's to be frank though, if, 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 you know, rest in peace, Chaswick Bozeman, Bozeman, but if he lives, we don't have this conversation. He's black Panther. So they took, they took a story from the comic book that made sense to fit it into this, this thing. So using that, this isn't an agenda. But you know, I don't. I, I do. I, I do understand the point of of a strong black male character being, although no one could anticipate it, what was going to happen. Yeah, you know, you, you you feel for that because that that should be there. Where is that character? Without having seen the movie, and I'm not a comic book guy. I'm just you know, to me, like I've said, superhero movies. And man food movies. And I like man food. That being said, listen, I personally would have loved for them to have recast the character. Um, and, and I remember when this first all popped off, I said, I, 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 I knew it. I said, yo, they're going to make Black Panther his sister. That seemed like the logical thing to do. Um, and of course, people were trying to say, no, you don't know what it is. It's going to be a surprise. Wasn't no fucking surprise. I knew it was going to be her. Um, don't forget though. She's also the smartest one in, in, in the movie. She's a smart one. Right. You know what I mean? So yes. It, it makes sense. She makes the weapons. Yeah. She's the smartest one. She's the one with the, this, this, she's this one who's skilled mentally. Yes. Um, I don't know. I, I just, you know, listen, other than blade, you know, we have blade, you know, on a smaller scale, we got the Falcon, uh, Anthony Mackie's character. But in terms of huge cinematic proportions, I mean, there, there was Blade, but really there's only been the Black Panther. You know, I'd love to see Luke Cage be made on a, on a, on a, on a magnificent cinematic scale. Well, Luke uh, Cage in the series was good. It's really good. You're talking about the Netflix series? Yeah. Yeah, but that's TV. No, I know, but I'm just saying it was, it was, it was good, so they could do it as a movie. They could do yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Um, and I don't pass that. And I'm sure all the comic book geeks right now are fucking whizzing off in the, pa the palms of their hands and laptops going, there's this one and this one. I, I'll pass Luke Cage, Falcon, Blade, 
uh, what did I just name? Blade, Luke Cage, Falcon. Uh, yeah, I only know about three or four. So if there are any others out there, um, the reason I would assume they haven't been touched is because they're not big enough. If, if you know, if we knew if they were big enough, we'd know about them. Um, so yeah, man, I, I just you know with this character of this magnitude. And speaking of which, when we talk about Black Adam, Hawkman, you know, played by my man who does uh, City on a Hill, Aldous Hodge. I, I would have loved to see, he would have been a great Black Panther to me. You know, like I would have loved to have seen it recast. Um, the sister thing is nice, but fuck that. But okay. If we weren't in this place with the narrative that we're putting out and, and power strong women power would 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 it been recast good question is yeah. it, i think this is part of the time that we're in as well i mean God, I, I can't wait till we get out of this cuz this is all part of the same thing and listen i'm not putting anything down you know had chadwick Bo, Bo, Bowman, chadwick Bozeman been, been alive we wouldn't be having this conversation it's unfortunate and it's the, it is the reality of what it is that he isn't here. He's remembered. He would be remembered for what he has done. He had a short career, but a great career. Uh, but if this was a different time, I agree with you. I think it's recast. I don't think that we make the sister, even though it does <coughs> follow a storyline. Right. Right. Uh, I think that is it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Dates. Yep. I got. Them all. I, I got them all. Uh, you're listening to this. We're in Tampa. That is Tampa, Florida. Ehor City. Uh. Hopefully it's. Hopefully it's good this time. You know, like Andy, it's busy. Wait, well, I, I, I didn't. Go ahead. I'm. I'm. I know you've heard me say it, but I'm really. Tomorrow is my attempt to put my best fucking foot forward. I got a trainer. I'm going to start working out starting tomorrow. I'm going to start trying to eat right, which is to say, because I know we're going to be in Tampa of all places to be tempted. Oof. I'm going to try to do everything in my muscle to show some discipline. And when we get done with the show, to go back to the hotel and call a night and not hang out and drink and eat poorly. So as supportive as you could be, uh, remember that. Are you going to eat early before the shows? Or are you going to get them to package something up for you that you can take back to the hotel that's not bad? The only thing that I could eat from there that would not be deemed not bad, and that's even testy, is a salad. So I would probably rather go try to find somewhere early enough to where I can eat something good. you know, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be hard, man. But you can do it, and and I, I've been trying to do it. I've lost a little bit of weight. I'm not looking good. I just lost a little bit of weight. I really want to be healthier, man. I'm 10 years older than you, and I, I really I'm really feeling it. Like this year has been very uh, uh, eye opening and awakening to me. Like I'm not the same guy. You know, you yeah. hear, when you you know you. <clears throat> I, I never feel like I'm old. Like I still feel like I'm like young, like in my head, I feel like the age, my head, my, you know, like I don't realize that I'm the oldest guy on an electric scooter sometimes until I see another old guy and I go, that dude looks old on that electric scooter. And then I go, oh, that dude's younger than me. I mean, it takes mm-hmm. that for me to realize like how old I am. Right. Cause I still feel good. But this year, Telling you, if you can get to it now, because it's only going to get harder. It's been really hard. And I want to work out. I want to do more. But then my knee hurts. My elbow hurts. My shoulder hurts. So mm. do it now, man. Do it. Do it. And I'll be right there with you. I'll help out as much as I can. Uh, but but it, it there's a there's a balance because sometimes you do need to eat something. And maybe you should have a cheat night in the week that you go ahead and have something to eat instead of. It can't be a punishment. That's the that's the, that's the thing that I'm trying to I get like to. that. I like that. I like that. It can't be a punishment. Yeah, it has to be a lifestyle choice, but it can't right. be a punishment. Because if you no one wants to be on punishment. So you have well, to make it just it, depends on what, well, what who, you're into. It's who, who's doing the punishing. Uh, yeah. But, Gemma. 
but you, that that's the thing. You got to make it so that it, it is survivable. You have to be able to do it so that it's rewarding. It's not a punishment and that you, it, it, it's working for you. Anyway, we're going to be in Tampa the 18th to the 20th. Uh, that's the week you're listening to this podcast. And, uh, like Ari said, Ybor city. I hope it, when you were out there last time, I didn't go with you. Was it, uh, back to normal? Like were people out? Was it? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. So that's going to make it more difficult for you. Uh, weekend of Thanksgiving, the 25th to the 26th, Aries is going to be at Helium, Indianapolis. Um, and I am going to be at the Tempe Improv with Adam Ferreira. You know him from uh, uh, all kinds of uh, Nurse uh, nurse Jackie, uh, Rescue You. Uh, that's Adam. And we're going to be at the Tempe Improv. I'm going to go out there and have some turkey day with my boys. Then the following week, uh, we'll be on, on the Ontario Improv, the 11th through the 4th. That's uh, back in California. Looking forward to that show. Looking forward to that room. Looking forward to those the people that come out. Uh, Aries fans, I love your fans that come out in Ontario. There, it's there's something about that community. That they just yep. the comedy's great out there. You know when we say comedians, every comedian has a, a congregation. Yeah, and we're pastors. Ontario Improv is our church. Yeah, I, I love it up there. I love that you, that they're not, they still are, I don't want to use the word woke. They, they know what we're, what we're going through, but they come in that comedy room and they know that that is something that you leave outside. Yes. That we're coming to do comedy. This room has, it, it's there for that. Uh, then the 29th through the 31st, we're going to be at Magoobies in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, our first time there. Baldy Mall. Uh, it's going to be a great, great show for the New Year's. Please come out, make get your tickets right away. They're, they're selling out for the uh, for the New Year's Eve show. It's going to be a fun show, uh, a great place to come ring in that New Year. And then uh, the fifth through the eighth, we're going to be at Helium Buffalo, another room, another place that I just love. I don't know how to say this without. It, it, I think I think when you say it, I used to hear this in uh, political terms: uh, lunch pail uh, people, hard hat, hard hat lunch pail people that work and want to come out and have a good time and, and, and society is, is important, but the good time leaving some shit behind and knowing what that room's about is to laugh and have a good time. There's something about that. And I love it. And Buffalo is one of those rooms too, man. I love that room. Yeah. Uh, except, you know, to, uh, and I think every time we've been there, it's been cold except maybe once or twice. I'm not a fan of that Buffalo cold, but, yeah, you're right. There's something about the city, the people. Uh, we always stay at that same hotel. You know, they got that place that we go to. Look, I'm already talking about fucking food. I was going to say the Buffalo Wings. Well, they have great wings. So you do them only once the time when you're out there. That's right. That's right. That's right. Don't punish myself. Okay. You, 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 uh, you're, if, you're allowed to have, one, you know. One if I one. live by that mantra, I'll be okay. Yeah. Um. All right. This is uh, S.C. Will. You know, something I read, uh, somebody said, I think it was on YouTube. Like, dude, does anybody even listen to these musical people they play at the end? One person said, I did maybe once or twice. Uh, there were a couple people that were good. But for the most part, a lot of people, I think, well, he, he was speaking for himself. He was like, yo, man, I turned that shit off because them people are garbage. Uh, but damn, man, you see how hard this is, people, to have a dream and go for it. Ugh. Do you, do you, um, do you, do you uh, at the end of the movie, they always have the credits? Yeah. Not everybody stays for the credits. No, so, unless you're a Marvel movie. But sometimes there's little gems that are at the end of the movie. So you stay and you right. watch it. Some, some of these you're not going to like. Sometimes you'll get a gem. It's up to you as the listener to decide what you, are, are you out there? Are you out there? Are you listening to it? And then you're staying for the adventure that this could be good. Cause if it's not good, you can turn it off in, in, you know, a few bars, right? but hang out. Maybe it's going to be worthwhile. I'm, I'm only saying that to say that, you know, be surprised. Don't be in the dark. There you go. I'm in the dark here. I'm in the dark. What live? I got no live. You know where that's from? Uh, that's the the devil one, right? Where he's the devil. No. What is that one? I got no. The life. clue was I'm in the dark here. I'm in the dark here. I'm in the dark. I don't know which one it is. Son of a woman. 
That's an oh yeah, it is in the dark. He's blind. That's remember when he tries to kill yeah when he tries to kill himself and and Chris O'Donnell tries to stop him yeah and he said I'm in the dark yeah he goes you got to live your life Colonel what life I got no life yeah you're right I yeah obviously you're right that's the line yeah. but yeah I didn't get it to you yeah I'm in the dark here I'm in the dark <laughs> what life I've got no life yeah. And then the buggy leaves the hotel room. <laughs> All right. I, I think you got to do more of these. I think you should put those out, man. Oh, those should be God. TikToks, 15 seconds. This character replacing this character. And then you just do it. Dude, those are just funny, man. Just for 15 seconds. Remember Vines? Remember Vines yes. for like six seconds? Yes. That's what these are, man. All right. I'm in the dark. Huh? I'm in the dark here. I got no life. I guarantee it. See? <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's gave me a Marv Albert. Yes. <laughs> All right. All right. Essie Wilson and Jadakiss. Do me right. Oh, this must be an artist featured with Jadakiss. Artist Essie Wilson. E-S-S-I-E. -S -S Wilson. W-I-L-S-O-N. Uh, some of this is redundant. Uh, Instagram. Essie Wilson with music, the word music at the end. YouTube, Essie Wilson. Facebook, Elsie Wilson Music. Same as Inst Instagram. Oh my God. <laughs> Jesus, Andy. And they come without warning sometimes. It's like the fucking the, the FBI, nigga. There's no knock. They just bust in and order everybody to get face down on the floor. That one that you did in the in the middle of the podcast though when it like it it, it felt like it hurt you on this side. Oh, thought, Jesus. Oh. oh Spotify Essie Wilson uh Apple Music Essie Wilson the song is called Do Me Right by Elsie Wilson and Jadakiss. Uh one more time with the spelling E S S I E W I L S O N and Jadakiss Do Me Right all right, y'all. Spears and Steinberg. Thanks for listening to the Spears and Steinberg podcast. If you'd like to know who's responsible for this shit, it was hosted by Ari Spears and Andy Steinberg, produced by Steve Merrick and Anthony Holmes, executive producer Big Papa, Robert Kelly, and Matt Klein Schmidt for the Laugh Button Podcast. For more information on where to find us on the internet, visit SpearsbergPod.com.